Hi everybody, just a quick tidbit of information here, a helpful hint that may come in handy if you ever find yourself in the realm of power supply design. Got this old computer power supply here from 2001. I highly recommend you take one of these apart if you've never done so before. If you don't, you're missing out on a really good opportunity to learn something and scrounge around for some half-decent parts. Anyway, I figured I would salvage a fan from this thing and a few capacitors and inductors, but that's not what I'm going to talk about here. What I want to talk about is, let me get this fan off of here first, the voltage selection switch. 115 volt one way, flip it, 230 volt the other way, and it's just single pull, single throw switch. It's not like this is a linear supply where you would have a double pull, double throw switch going to uh, two different primary coils of the transformer. There's no um, you know, low frequency transformer in here. It's just the switch, the full wave bridge rectifier right here, and these two capacitors all work together to be able to select the two different voltages here on the input while maintaining a constant voltage, DC voltage, going into the high frequency switching transformer. And oops, would you look at that? I was so busy taking this thing apart and talking to the camera that I sliced my finger open. I didn't even know it. Got some blood on here. Let me clean this up. There we go, got a band-aid on it. I had to review the footage to see how that happened and it seems that it happened when I was trying to unplug the connector for the fan. There's the, the white, the male connector right there, trying to pull it off, yank it off there and when, I, when it finally did release, my finger must have sliced up right here on this. Um, yeah, that's really, really sharp steel right there. I can just feel that, so that's got to be where it happened right there. Let's go back to the power supply. Now when I first discovered this kind of circuit, this is not the first time I've actually seen this kind of thing before. I discovered it for years ago and I was really fascinated at how simple and elegant it was that you could um, tune the input voltage to two completely different levels while maintaining um, a constant output with, with just a single pole, single throw switch with, uh, you know, contacting two very strategic points in the, the typical AC to DC um, conversion circuit with a rectifier. Let me show you a schematic. So before making this video, I wanted to do some research to see if this particular part of switch mode power supply was discussed anywhere. And I did find a certain thread in the EEV blog which referenced the TI app note 556 introduction to power supplies and on page 7 of that app note is this circuit right here with 115 volt or 230 volt um, going in and depending on whether or not the switch is closed you would have constant output voltage now this power supply as it is here 115 volt switch that's going to be in the closed position and we can see the circuit here if the uh, if we got 115 volt input here going like on the positive half cycle uh, current will go in here and then through this capacitor and then through the closed switch to the other side of the AC input and on the negative side of the half cy cycle we'd have current going in this way down through this cap and then up through that diode, totally ignoring these two diodes because they basically get shorted out. And what you have is if uh, you got 115 volt in, then you've got, um, with diode drops included, roughly 160 volt here and 160 volt there, 320 volt out. With uh, 230 volt input, then what you want to do is open that switch. So then it acts like a normal full wave bridge rectifier and a single capacitor filter with these two caps basically you know equivalent to a single capacitor and that that's it you got 230 volt AC RMS in and 320 volt DC coming out another way to look at this is if you have your 
line voltage going into a step down transformer and then rectifier filter maybe a linear regulator but that's not always necessary anyway it's um suppose we have a 12.6 volt transformer here going into the rectifier we get 17.8 volts um, minus the diode drop turns out to be 6.4 volts that's with the switch open it, it just acts like a normal full wave bridge rectifier but if you close that switch then um, we end up with twice that voltage 32.8 volts so it's basically a voltage doubler and um, you know with the switch closed or straight up ordinary rectifier circuit with the switch open and you have these two voltage options available for your power supply design and that would be especially helpful if you do have a linear regulator because if the linear regulator has a low voltage output like maybe 5 volts or 3.3 or something like that you don't want to put a whopping 33 volts into it you'd rather have 16 volts going into it then it dissipates a lot less power so this is something to take into account if you're making a, a linear power supply here's the power supply board out of the box and we can see the two gray wires here from the switch one of them goes right there to the neutral there's just a common mode choke right here between these two traces here but that's going to the blue wire the neutral input from the AC line and then the other gray wire that goes to this pad right here which seems to be quite isolated until you see that it goes right there through this inductor little toroid inductor and then that goes to the center point between the two capacitors right here there's a positive side of that capacitor and the negative side of that capacitor I didn't mention anything about this inductor before because fundamentally it's not necessary but in this application it might be here to cut down on some some high frequency noise when the when the switch is actually switched from one position to another and one more thing with this particular power supply I popped it earlier what I did was I tested it on various voltages with this switch in various positions so with 115 volt input and the switch in 115 volt position of course it worked fine I flipped it over to 230 surprisingly it still worked fine it, it had to vary the the switching frequency going to the transformer of course but it still output 5 volts and 12 volts um, I didn't test it under load though but at, with no load it still seemed to work fine but then with the switch in 115 volt position and I had a step up transformer on a variac slowly turned it up to about 200 volts or so and then that's when this thing this little mauve right here finally gave out and popped and just sprayed molten stuff all over the, the rectifier and got a few spots right here on the bottom of the, uh, the steel case and a little bit of smoke and a little bit of a loud bang in there too and then of course when that happened then the fuse also blew so that's actually good I was actually really afraid that one of these big caps would blow and spew noxious fumes out of out of the uh, the tops of it. I'm pretty sure they're going to be scored. It's not going to be like old school caps without scoring, but still that would have been a much messier ordeal than with uh, what I really experienced with just this thing blowing up. At low voltage, this doesn't matter what position the switch is in, but at high voltage with 230 volt, you better make sure this thing's in the 230 volt position otherwise you're going to end up with a busted power supply most power supplies however these days wouldn't even have this switch they would already be designed to accept a full range of international voltages from 100 to 250 volt ac at frequencies of 47 to 63 hertz or something like that 
And that's really all I'm going to say about that. This is just a very simple circuit that serves a very useful, important role in the general operation of this power supply and lots of other power supplies, switch mode power supplies that would have the, the voltage input selection switch in it like that. I won't go into any more detail about this because there's plenty more information out there on how these things actually work. I recommend you look at uh, the post-apocalyptic inventor YouTube channel. He's got a series of, a, of some, some videos in there that looks at, um, go, goes into good detail about, about uh, linear regulators, linear power supplies, and also switch mode power supplies. Whole bunch of really good circuits and interesting information right there. So if you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye. And whoa, look at this. I just picked up this calculator and looks like it's been invaded by space invaders. If I just pushed on button though, completely clears out.